Tom, sorry. There we are, okay. Uh, comrades, I'm sure we are all becoming aware that South Africa is going through something of a watershed. Some distinct change in elections after 30 years of having the ANC in power, which was the result of monumental internal and international struggles to bring a liberation movement to power, which was promising to change completely the fundamental conditions of African people, but in abstract, not in concrete uh, proposals and program. And as we know in the experience of Africa, liberation movements have come to power and then after 15 to 20 years have then found that they have not met the basic needs of uh, people quite apart from a socialist uh, vision and that there's been rising dissatisfaction and opposition movements of all types, unfortunately not of the particularly working class character to change that society and to mobilize working people in its distinct socialist uh, program. Uh, but we do see a splintering of the liberation movements and new parties, uh, new and in inverted commas, uh, new parties emerging uh, from the uh, mother body um, and uh, breaking away to uh, form new uh, have new political formations of unknown character, generally uh, affected by ethnic uh, divisions, or of, as I think uh, YZ is going to be explaining, uh, of the ability to be able to also get access to the state. So we find disunited opposition in South Africa, which we'll learn, which ranges everything from the traditionalist to apparently the ultra-radical, but none related to the working class and representing working class uh, interests. The fundamental thesis, the two-stage theory, the fundamental logic of the ANC coming to power is that once we have political power, all else will follow. Economic advantages of having housing, a decent wage, employment, free education, all of that was as assumed to have been inevitably following. Once you've had a white government, would not, never have, have conceded that, and the black government, a liberation movement would do all of that. Now, comrades, we have two uh, speakers uh, today, primarily Wiseman Hamilton, two South African uh, people in the labor movement, YZ is well known, is well known internationally in terms of the participation in the Marxist workers' tendency, and then uh, subsequently, as wise you probably you can explain, uh, of uh, the political formations representing Marxist uh, tendencies in South Africa right now, but mainly in the public eye in terms of a working class fighter, someone who has uh, participated in the mine workers' strikes, the EPWP expanded public works and won a, fa a fabulous uh, victory in relation to the uh, health workers uh, and has been involved in virtually every single uh, working class struggle, but with the aim of uh, developing a mass workers' party for which uh, is, he has been given the uh, authority at times to speak, although as we also know, with a number of disappointments uh, from the trade unions. And then we have as well, to respond to that, uh, Comrade Mametwe Sabai, who is the president of the G Jewusa, but what, better known uh, to most comrades as the person who was a, a leader, maybe primarily the prominent leader in the Clover strike, uh, which uh, involved the a Zionist company buying out a, a, a famous uh, local dairy and then being able, been then subjecting the workers to uh, all kinds of retrenchments, uh, a, 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 sh a shivering up uh, of that uh, organization. And uh, if it had been posed now, 
would be seen in an entirely different light uh, because in the union at that time had no support from the ANC and struggling against a Zionist takeover of a major industry in, in South Africa. Comrades, let me not speak more. Uh, Waisi, uh, the floor is over to you. If we could ask, uh, if you could keep it within 25 uh, minutes or so, you will have the right to pry and to reply to specific questions. And, uh, you know, you would be followed by a response uh, from our comrade Sabai. Why is he over okay, to you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Dave. Um, yeah, well, may, maybe just, you know, by, as you suggested, the way of, uh, by way of introduction, um, I'm with the Marxist Workers' Party, which had its origins uh, in the Marxist Workers' Tendency of the ANC, which was established in uh, in exile. I'm not going to go into the whole history of how we come to be who we are, uh, but concentrate on the subject at hand. Um, I think that there is a general consensus that the 2024 elections represent the most significant uh, uh, elections since the ANC came to power in 1994. Because for the first time, um, it is expected that the ANC will fall uh, below 50% and therefore be unable to form a government on its own. Uh, against that background, there has been uh, a preparation by big business in particular, but not only big business, also uh, mainly petty bourgeois formations who have attempted to take advantage of the travails of the ANC in order to, I think, realize what should be their collective uh, ban, our time to eat, and have unashamedly attempted to secure a base for themselves by appealing to backward sentiments uh, like xenophobia, uh, racism, uh, attacks on women and the LGBTQI uh, community, uh, ethnicity, tribalism, and, and radical populism. I think that aside from the significance of the possibility that the ANC will fall below 50% and will therefore have to enter into coalition with uh, any number of parties uh, that have appeared on the electoral plane in the recent period. Uh, aside from that, I think the, the, the other significant feature of these elections is the class character of the political formations that have appeared on the scene. What is unprecedented is that the, the capitalist class, big business, has on the basis of the declared figures, uh, which in terms of the new uh, political party funding act, they are prepared to disclose, have uh, poured as much as half a billion into new formations like Rise and Zanzi, uh, Build One South Africa, led by the former uh, leader of the DA, uh, Musi Maimani, Action SA, and below them are other formations like um, the newly formed uh, MK party led by Zuma, um, the Patriotic Alliance, uh, which trades openly on, on, 
on racism, stoking racism within the colored population, pushing the narrative that under apartheid, the coloreds were not white enough and now under black majority rule, they are not black enough. Uh, an ex-convict, incidentally, was quite shameless uh, in, his, in his ambitions and in stoking racism within, within the working class. To sum it up, these are parties that have not, not the slightest interest in uniting the working class in the face of these developments. Um, and are, are therefore serving the interests of the capitalist class, who having come to the conclusion that the main instrument for the preservation of their interests, the ANC, has now become the victim of the law of diminishing returns uh, in their political investment in it, and are now diversifying the uh, portfolio of political investments to create parties that will act as a prop for the ANC should it fall below 50% and be obliged to enter into a coalition arrangement. It is uncertain what the precise constellation of the coalition would be. Uh, the ANC itself is divided over whether or not uh, they should be prepared to enter into a coalition with the DA or with the EFF. And that uh, question could cause further divisions uh, in the event of the ANC be compelled to enter into those negotiations within the ANC itself. Uh, I think that the, the, the other feature of these developments uh, is that what we have is a crisis of political representation for the two main classes within society. The capitalist class has been working uh, um, very hard at uh, trying to ensure that there would be continuity in their macroeconomic policy and the assault on the working class that these policies require. Um, and that is the reason that they've sponsored uh, political formations like Rise and Zanzi and so forth. To, to keep the ANC on the, on the straight and narrow as far as the continuation of these policies is concerned. The um, other feature of the situation, as even the Sunday Times observed about three weeks ago, um, is that unlike in uh, at least the two previous elections, where there was some form of uh, working class representation. Uh, in the case of tw in 2014, the Workers and Socialist Party established by the Democratic Socialist Movement <clears throat> at the time when Sibé and I were still in the same organization. Um, and the National Independent Strike Committee formed by the mine workers in the uprising that took place in 2012 that culminated in the Marikana massacre. Um, of course, there was another party that postured as radical, even socialist, and that's the Economic Freedom Fighters, the EFF, which is really just the external incarnation of the ANC, led by a corrupt leadership, funded by uh, capitalists, including a self-confessed uh, uh, corrupt tobacco smuggler, but which seized the opportunity in 2014 of the enormous anger with the government as a result of the Marikana massacre to, uh, to take electoral advantage of the opportunity and secured, I think, 6.7% of the vote, amounting to about 1.1 million votes. But the only genuine Workers' Party that contested in 2014 was the Workers and Socialist Party. It got a small vote squeezed by the EFF uh, through a combination of the enormous uh, resources it had behind it that we were no match for as the Workers and Socialist Party at that time. 
but also the fact that the left uh, were all infatuated with the EFF and basically offered the Workers and Socialist Party no support whatsoever. Um, the only significant point I think we should add is that WASP approached the leadership of NUMSA uh, after its launch on Sharpeville Day in 2013. Upon learning that NUMSA had committed itself to create a Workers' Party at the Special National Congress that they were going to convene in December of that year. We had several discussions with the political advisor, Ezra Banda, and in one or two of those discussions, the economic advisor, Professor Chris Malikane also, Malikane, Malikane also participated. And our position to the NUMSA leadership was that they should take their place inside WAPS on the basis of their political and numerical weight within society uh, and within the labor movement uh, in particular. And I won't go into the details of those discussions, but they got nowhere because um, there, there was absolutely no interest in the kind of program that we had put forward should, that should be the basis of such a party, which is mainly the nationalization of the commanding rights of the economy under workers' control, free education, free healthcare, the election of all officials subject to the right of immediate recall, and a workers' MP on a workers' wage. In relation to the latter, uh, Aswell, Banda, and Chris Malikani literally fell over laughing. Uh, so those discussions didn't take place. And unfortunately, the Special National Congress was manipulated uh, to prevent it from making a pronouncement on the formation of a Workers' Party. Um, in 2019, the only other party that had its origins within the labor movement was the Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party, which had been created by the, the Stalinist cabal that leads NUMSA in a deliberate attempt to obstruct the implementation of the declaration that had been made in July 2018 at a working class summit that had been convened by SOFTU on the basis of a resolution adopted at its founding Congress in 2017, attended by a thousand delegates representing 147 community youth, NGOs, and trade union formations that adopted a declaration to establish a mass workers' party on a socialist program. And I'll come back to those questions at the later stage if it's possible. Uh, that party was uh, unable to secure a seat a party that presented itself as having been created in the spirit of the deliberations at its special national congress in 2013 was everything but that it was an act of political strike breaking on the part of the NUMSA leadership. Uh, it, in South Africa's uh, proportional representation system, depending on the, on the size of the poll, it is possible to secure a seat if you obtain between 30 and 35,000 votes. On that basis, with a membership at that time of 350,000, if the NUMSA membership regarded the SRWP as their party, they would have been guaranteed 10 seats. If the members of their families uh, supported the party that were eligible to vote, they could have doubled, <sighs> trebled, or quadruple the size of their vote. If it had the support of SAFTU and the working class summit formations, it could have emerged as the biggest opposition party based on the working class in 2019 already. Instead, it, it secured only about 24,000 votes. And again, I don't want to go into the history um, you know, of the formation of that party, how it was funded, how completely undemocratic uh, uh, it was, even the founding Congress ran on Stalinist lines. Um, so those were the workers' parties, at least, that contested in 2014 and 2019. In 2024, unfortunately, there is no workers' party that will be allowed to contest 
there had been a uh, an attempt by a workers' party that has been formed by the Association of Mining and Construction Workers Union, the union that came to promise to prominence in the wake of the the uprising uh, in 2012 on the mines, which saw a mass exodus from the National Union of Mine Workers into Ampu, uh, and made it the force that it is today with 250,000 members. They called a special Congress in July last year, where they adopted a resolution to form a Labour Party with an extremely radical resolution that referenced socialism. Uh, it is far to the left, in fact, of the public pronouncements that you've heard from the leadership of Anku, who have described the party as having to be based on Christian values and being social democratic and so forth. That's not a reflection of the resolution that was adopted with that Congress. Unfortunately, um, the, the IEC um, has not allowed them to... Uh, to appear on the ballot on the grounds that they have failed to comply with the new regulations. And this is another feature, I think, of these elections that is different from all those that have taken place before. The IEC has introduced new, much more onerous requirements for political parties to contest. And these include that there should be a founding meeting with the adoption of the equivalent of a founding co covenant of with uh, uh, a minimum of a thousand present at such a meeting, which should be registered with the names, surnames, and ID numbers supplied to the IEC for registration purposes. In addition to that, the mere fact that you are registered does not automatically make you eligible to contest the election. For that, you have to climb other hurdles. These regulations, incidentally, do not apply to the parties uh, in parliament on the basis of the previous elections in 2019. And you are required now to submit a total of 63,000 signatures if you are going to contest nationally and in every province. And all of these uh, uh, signatories must supply their names, surnames, and ID numbers. The, this documentation has to be uploaded on the online platform provided by the IEC. Um, the Labour Party and a number of other parties uh, argue that the system was not fit for purpose and submitted evidence to that effect to the, to the Constitutional Court after deliberate delays on the part of the IEC in allowing the Labour Party to contest its failure to address its concerns. Uh, the result is that it will not be contested. So that in these elections, once again, at this time, there is no Workers' Party whatsoever that will be contesting these elections. So far as the, the configuration of the coalition is concerned, well, both the DA and the EFF have put up their hands and indicated that they would be prepared to enter into a coalition with the, with the ANC. Uh, Malima has indicated that one of his preconditions would be that um, his right-hand man, Floyd Shivambu, should become the finance minister. Um, yeah, and, and the DA itself as indicated yeah. uh, can you, comrade sorry can you, for that yeah, uh, please yeah, mute if you uh, uh, to let our speaker speak yeah. Yeah. roger if you could mute yeah so there's an ultra legged you see, you must close the, the, I mean, you must close that thing at the bottom. You're not in a position to mute that comrade's phone, uh, at, uh, the host. Uh, yeah, we we are. I'm, uh, it's just we all it may end up muting you too. Um, Roger? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll continue. Uh, yeah, please continue. Now, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah now, I think that 
you know, what the uh, outcome of these elections? Yeah, guys, this is what I can do. Yeah, mama. Uh, Kia, if you... Uh, oh, there we are. Okay, I think... I think yeah. All right. Now, I think what, what these... Uh, you know the 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 speculation about the outcome of the of the uh, of these elections conceal is the reality that this administration, the outgoing administration, is in fact a minority government uh, in a minority parliament. The real turning point took place in the twenty nineteen election. When, for the first time since 1994, less than half of the registered voters participated in these elections, using the yardstick of the eligible voting population in the country, the ANC enjoys the active electoral support of about 27% of the voters in this country. There has been a mass stay away in elections over a number of elections before this one. Even in these elections, 13 million eligible voters have not bothered to register. So that we will have a situation where uh, only 64% of the eligible voting population will be eligible to participate. There's no guarantee, by the way, that even the registered voters themselves will all turn up. There has been a slight increase in the number of young voters through the IEC's registration drive. But beyond that, what will emerge out of this election will in all likelihood be a repeat of a constellation of coalition uh, or, or a coalition government whose constellation won't represent the active electoral support of the majority of the eligible voting population in, in the country. Now, I don't think it is necessary for me in uh, in this meeting uh, of people that I'm assuming follow events very closely to explain what the reason is that uh, the ANC in particular finds itself in the position that uh, it is. It's a result of the, the dismal failure of its capitalist policy that it, is, it has been pursuing uh, and was committed to in reality even before they, uh, they were elected in 1994. But uh, sped up the betrayals, the basis for its betrayals by the adoption of the Growth, Employment and Redistribution Strategy, a neoliberal program in 1996. In fact, I think the word adoption is a misrepresentation. It was imposed by a small kitchen cabinet led by Thabo Mbeki under Mandela's watch on not only uh, the government, but the ANC and the country as a whole. There was absolutely no debate about the matter. Uh, and it represented the culmination of the systematic capitulation of the ANC uh, in relation to its commitment to the Freedom Charter and the nationalization clauses that was uh, that were adopted in 1955 at the Congress of the People, which they had abandoned under the pressure of imperialism and capitalism in South Africa long before the actual formal negotiations began uh, in the late 1980s. The the basis uh, of the negotiations uh, there. Sorry, sorry, Wisey, I have to indicate you've had thirty minutes now. Um, sorry, okay, if, all right. Yeah, and and okay, you so have the right to I'll, come in again. But look, yeah, just, I right, don't want okay. to interrupt you completely. If, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Let me just wind up uh, uh, for two or three minutes quickly. So we've had a catastrophic outcome as a result of those neoliberal policies. Uh, the most unequal society on the planet, uh, unemployment standing at 46%, and all the plans that they themselves have made through the National Development Plan that they adopted in 2011, that uh, itself calculated that in order to eliminate extreme poverty, the economy would have to grow at the rate of 5.6% per annum for 10 years consecutively. 
That's just a pipe dream. So we're now in a situation where the policies which the government has been implementing require an intensification of the assault on the working class. And not only on socioeconomic matters, but even on political rights. The decision to, to bar the Labour Party from contesting on the basis of the kind of argument that one of the judges made was that it was going to be too costly is consistent with the way in which a price has been put on health, on housing, on water supply, on the right to collective bargaining in the public sector, which the, the Constitutional Court condoned the theft of the 2020 wage increase of, and now the right to vote itself. It is a very dangerous precedent that has been set. The position that we, and I'll conclude on this point, the position that we have taken as the Marxist Workers' Party is that it is now time for the implementation of the declaration that was adopted at the Working Class Summit by SAFTU. Unfortunately, it appears as if that declaration has been buried. The Labour Party has stepped into the vacuum, has issued a statement declaring that this Labour Party should not be seen as an AMCO party and invited other trade union formations and progressive movement to come together to help to build this party. It remains our position that all trade unions Suddenly you're muted, uh, Vice Mayor. I don't know why. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, yeah, so that, that that's what we are calling for. There is a yearning for workers' unity. The trade union movement leadership is lagging far behind the consciousness that exists amongst the masses. I just read in the Sunday Times that there's been a new spike in service delivery protests for 2022, which meant there was a protest at least one every four hours throughout the year of 2020. The number of strikes is increasing. And as we've pointed out for many years now, the protests amongst the students over corruption with the uh, bursary scheme called NASFAS um, financial and academic exclusion is an annual affair. It cries out for unity in struggle. And that is the position that we have consistently been putting forward. And we uh, are hoping that the Labour Party leadership will take the initiative and fill the vacuum that has been created by the abandonment of the, uh, of the Working Class Summit Declaration in 2018 by the uh, 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 by the sub leadership. We have a situation where... Uh, uh, sorry, Vaisi, we must well. draw... You've had 40 okay. minutes now. Right. Could we could we pull it? I'm right. sorry then. I'm very sorry. You no, won't no, have no, a chance fine. to come back. Okay. And right. uh, okay. comrades, mm -hmm. thanks very much, uh, Vaisi, for spelling out uh, the trajectory yeah. of uh, the parties. No no Just call. to... Uh, uh, Eric, please uh, mute. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, Dave. <laughs> yeah, no, please, please, Eric, uh, mute. Uh, and uh, why is, uh, just to help the uh, comrades, um, the DA, uh, Democratic uh, Alliance, uh, is the uh, foremost capitalist party. EFF is the uh, breakaway from the NC. Uh, which uh, claims to be fighting for economic freedom. Just just that point. Uh, if I could ask uh, comrades uh, Sabay to uh, come in now and respond to these uh, points, comrades, uh, we we let's uh, if we could uh, come in for about uh, uh, ten to fifteen minutes. I, I'd appreciate it. I'm sorry. I know you've been waiting, but we look forward to hearing you. Mm. Uh, can we just ask everybody to mute, please? I don't know how to mute everybody uh, and leave the speaker unmuted. So could everybody please mute, except for the speaker? Uh, particularly Eric, please, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Uh. 
Okay. Okay. Mamlet. And I, yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade Chairperson and Comrades, mm -hmm. for this invitation, and Comrade Wazy for I think um, a brilliant assessment insofar as the objective situation is concerned. I mean, that the ANC would fall below 50% is widely expected, as I think he correctly pointed out. Now, the scale of that fall remains, of course, a question of you know debate, and there are different powers on that. Um, I do think that um, they are not all below 40%, as some have said, but I think still somewhere at um, you know, um, 40 percent, then I mean the range between 40 and 50 um, can still be affected by many factors. I mean, in the recent time, one of the things that has become clear is that they are, I think, picking some votes, um, particularly in Muslim communities, um, against the background of the war on Gaza and the fact that the main opposition party, the DA, but also many other parties that have been eating into their support base, you know, the patriotic alliance uh, and so on. And these are parties that um, are the parties of genocide. And I think they have um, the past um, significant layers um, in those communities who in particular uh, are mobilized on this particular question. But the overall trajectory is that of a downward spiral on the part of the ANC. And I think um, as Comrade Wilsey has said, I mean, the most remarkable um, feature of this election has been really the advances that has been made um, as in the last elections by the right-wing populist parties, particularly those that are mobilizing around xenophobia and I think increasingly so racism in a kind in on the part of on the part of of of, of the patriotic alliance. But um insofar as xenophobia, they are not alone. The xenophobia um, I mean, they are in that, they have Action SA, um, but also this has become the official program uh, of even the main parties, um, slightly with the exception of the DA and the EFF, to the extent that the DA obviously won the cheap labor for monopoly capital. And of course, you know, the EFF um, is the one that you could argue has a bit of consistent Pan-Africanist position, except to say, under pressure, they've also yielded, as we've seen when there was, you know, there some door-to-door -door campaign to check whether people in the retail sector are employing a right proportion of South Africans vis-a-vis -vis the migrants and so on. But other than that, I think they've generally held the line, although they have not been insistent on disciplining their members who I think have participated in some of these xenophobic movements at a grassroots level. So it is a conductive phenomenon in that sense, as I think in all their main positions. Now, one of the key features, I think, um, of this election that um, just to add, because I think generally um, I'm in agreement with the line that Comrade Oasis has, has advanced, um, just to say that um, I am the member of the Workers and Socialist Party. Um, and of course, um, we only had you know, a split recently myself and him, and I think insofar as the gender trajectory of the political agreement we are, I mean, of the political process, we are in agreement. So I'm not going to repeat all that he said, um, save to touch points where I think uh, he might have missed, and I think where I'll probably be slightly differing, and I think that is the issue of the Labour Party, and I'll explain where am I differing. I don't, I, I don't disagree with the overall assessment. Uh, in terms of the significance, I think, of having the party come out of the labor movement, but why is that party not attracting attention? Now, the, 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 I think one point to just further emphasize is the fact that the, the support for the overall political establishment continued to dwindle. Um, already, as he pointed out, in the last elections, um, we have seen a situation where in of the 35.8 million eligible voters, 9 million didn't register. And of those that registered, about 60 something percent, 65 uh, percent, 9 million didn't bother to vote. And the end result is that we have a parliament that is based on the 49.8 
percent um, of the eligible voters. In that election, the ANC lost about 1.4 million votes, and I think that trajectory is going to continue. I think much more significant, of course, is the disillusionment of the youth who, for a time, were somehow um, mobilized by the EFF that presented itself as a party um, of the youth. And it was clear in the last election already that um, the number of youth, despite uh, enormous efforts and tremendous investment um, in their mobilization, especially by the IEC, along with all the parties of the political establishment and the EFF itself included in that, um, you know, of the 30 million, I mean, you know, of the of the millions of young people, I think about five, 15 million um, of the 32 million young people in this country. I mean, we have one of the most youthful country of the just below 60 million, 32 million are below the age of 30. Of that, 15 million are eligible voters. And to put what I'm saying into perspective, of the 15 million um, you know, young people below the age of 30 who are eligible to vote, only 4.6 million um, did register in the elections um, despite um, that, that push and so on. Now, this is consistent with the overall picture that even in this election, the polls that have been um, conducted do indicate that 83 Staggering 83% um, of the population of the survey are highly disappointed in the political establishment and the political process. And there are a number of reasons that have been cited um, as foremost in the disillusionment, but also in the choices that those that are still going to vote despite their disappointment are going to be actually making. I mean, first and foremost is the issue of corruption. Um, which has been cited in the poll that has been conducted by ENCA. The unemployment comes second, um, the issue of low shedding, the issue of poverty, and increasingly so this issue now of the water crisis that um, is becoming another developing disaster because of the aged and I think consistently breaking infrastructure that is not only shedding um, you know, millions of gallons of water on the streets, but also leaving many people without water for days in number of count, uh, in, in in number of regions across the country. Now, obviously, this begins to give you a picture in terms of what parties people will be choosing. The reality is that despite Ramaphosa being elected on the you know bandwagon of what you call the renewal project within the ANC, the feeling is that he has not been able to do that, and that is despite the fact that. Um, I mean, the former president uh, of the ANC, that is Jacob Zuma, who was responsible or rather held responsible for what is called a 10 wasted years or nine wasted years of state capture. Um, he is he's officially out of the party. And so are many of his supporters, including the general secretary who was elected, I think, in the Congress before the last one, and who has since been taken to DC and was expelled. Both of them have formed parties. In the case of Zuma, is you know um, the party called MK, named after the military or the guerrilla wing of the ANC during the National Liberation Struggle. And of course, um, you know the the former general secretary of the of the ANC has formed his own party. I don't know how far they are in terms of negotiations because uh, my understanding is that they were coming together. But what is becoming evident is that um, Zuma has positioned himself, if you like, as you know, an alternative also, not only to ANC in KZN, but also the IFP, where he's contesting them on the basis of a reactionary tribalist um, populist agenda um, that want to tap into Zulu nationalism that um, was cultivated by the IFP over years. Now, the in so far as you know, um, the DA is concerned. I mean, the DA has faced its own crisis. Um, they have experienced um, massive losses, particularly of their black leaders. Um, there's been a number of splits. Um, and just to mention the most significant is a launch of the good party, 
based on, I mean, she's a former mayor of, um, she's a former mayor of Cape Town, um, originally from the PAC and from the trade movement, um, with a, you know, a significant base and profile in the colored communities that have managed um, to, re to retain her to the party, that is Patricia Delile. They have also lost the former leader, uh, Musi Mayaman, who created this process. Um, is called Bosa. Basically, he sponsored lots of independent candidates across the country. Many of them are middle class people disillusioned, both with the ANC and the DA. And now they've put uh, candidates in these elections. Also, the Action SA, that is the part of the former mayor of Johannesburg, the one that is contesting mainly on the ticket, of course, of um, xenophobia, but also of um, much more fundamentalist free market, um, you know, politics. Um, I mean, you know, uh, this mayor was a former head of the Free Market Foundation. And, and one of the things that they are putting forward is that they want to break the power of the unions in the economy and in society. That's one of their, their main, you know, slogan. At the same time, by the way, as um, of course, they are positioning themselves on the issue of outsourcing. Um, she insourced the workers here in Johannesburg um, during our campaign of hashtag outsourcing must fall. And, um, you know, I think in Swane, where scandalously, um, you know, the EFF, which was with us on the street to fight for insourcing of workers, um, you know, not only did not support the insourcing of those workers in the council when they the vote to ensure that they are insourced, but as I learned quite recently now from the Action SA, you know, MMC, that um, despite that being voted um, for the workers to be insourced when the EFF returned to power temporarily there with the alliance of the, uh, with the coalition with the DA, they actually canceled that contract. And that's the, that, that undertaking, and that's because, you know, the EFF want, um, um, want uh, tenders. And as, as a spokesperson told me at the time of the struggle, that where do I expect them to take the money to fund the revolution? So that is one of the realities that I think um, in, in many ways define the, 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 the relationship between you know the EFF and even sections of the working class that it mobilized before, I think there is a recognition that this is a part that is not going to bring any fundamental change. Now, the most organized, politically conscious sections of the working class, I think, have always been very clear about that, um, which is the reason that, despite the impact, the size um, of the EFF in society and the black working class in general we have encountered them very less in the organized working class, particularly the trade union movement, and, and of course, in many community civics, despite the fact that this would be a dominant party in the whole milieu of unemployed youth, and of course, unemployed and impoverished communities, and in, in informal settlements, in rural areas, in townships, and all of that. But I think even amongst young people, who they are seeing the EFF in some of these coalition governments at local areas. I mean, you know, that coalition governments in all but West with the DA before, um, that didn't bring any fundamental change, but then they denied that they were in coalition. Um, but now, of course, they are in formal coalition. They are co-governing city of Johannesburg. They are co-governing another metro um, where the OR Tambo International, that is the, the former Johannesburg uh, Airport International, um, you know, is located, um, is called Igurulene. And there, even the ANC had to pull out of the coalition because such is a level of corruption and the plunder uh, because of tenders to BE or the Black Economic, um, or so-called Black Economic Empowerment um, or, you know, black capitalist ventures, um, that the um, even the most basic, basic services like rubbish collection have completely collapsed as a result. So I think because of this and also what they've been consistently doing 
Um, you know, many people recognize that this is a part that is not going to bring change. But also, what is very evident is that in their preparation for coalition with the ANC, which has always been, I think, their perspective for coming to power, that Malema had long given up on the perspective of the EFF matching on the basis of the sheer support allow, uh, of its own support uh, to power on its own. So I think his strategy until recently was just weaken the ANC, force them below 50%, which is where he's likely, um, uh, which is like what is likely to get in this election. And on the base of that, negotiate a coalition with them. And hopefully if things go his way, he can then be able to force them, uh, you know, to match and so on. But what is most significant about okay. the change in his rhetoric? Can no, I, sorry, Kwame, yeah, just okay. trying to start... draw together. You've had uh, more than 15 okay. minutes now, but just make the last point and then we open the okay. discussion. That, yeah. that um, unlike before where he said he will only enter coalition um, with any party that is prepared to carry out what they call their seven pillars, which just to uh, give you a sense, some of them included nationalizations of the key monopolies, um, but also free basic services like education, like water, like electricity, all those things and so on. All of that rhetoric has been abandoned in their preconditions um, for coalition. And I think Wazy has said the only thing that we have had is that he would insist that his DBT president be the minister of finance. Now, let me just deal just for a second as I conclude, Chair with the crisis of the labor movement. Of course, there are, you know, um, subjective factors, which I think Comrade Wazy has mentioned, and I think which is a key feature of the leadership of the labor movement everywhere. We, we don't have leaders with perspectives um, for a revolutionary change and a strategy um, to match the objective situation of a massive crisis of unemployment that has condemned, um, you know, 10.3 million people, um, you know, into chronic mass unemployment, where, you know, many of them have no any form of income, um, a housing crisis, which is not only, um, you know, not, uh, they've not only resolved the past housing backlog of 1.5 million, but it's getting worse. And, um, you know, it has increased from 1995 when it was 1.5 million housing units to 3.7 million. And I can go on and on in terms of every indicator. I mean, the increase in the you know levels of energy poverty because of the massive increase with regard to tariffs, which have increased by 360% in real terms between 2017 and of course, um, you know, the latest increase of 12.70% and um, this year. Um, and of course, the rolling blackouts, which are better, um, and many people expect is because of elections. But nonetheless, the reality that um, has forced um, many people into other alternatives, you know, forms of energy, um, over and above the fact that the fall in rent means uh, the fuels, you know, uh, petrol, diesel, uh, paraffin, other fuels, gas, uh, are becoming more and more unaffordable and out of reach for many working class people. And the result of all of this is, you know, the rising cost of living crisis um, that has raised levels of poverty, according to UCT, um, you know, the current 55% uh, of please, please conclude now, more. if you can. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, you know, it's underestimation. The real figure is, 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 is two third. But to say that there is, I think there's also an objective weaknesses. The movement is weakening. Just to give an example, trade unions lost half a million members in 2022. That is 500,000 in one year alone, right? And, and I think we've seen also the acceleration of the weaknesses um, insofar as the organized um, community initiatives that were also to some degree, a feature of an attempt to coordinate community struggles, which have been uncoordinated. Um, you know, Abba Salibasem, John Dole, I think it has become very weak over years. Um, Makua, which is for mining affected communities, it has also been weakened over years. And I think this is also a feature in addition to the fact that the students at universities 
have by and large been effectively hijacked by the EFF through their student command that has captured the movement out of the peace must fall. Thank you. Okay, okay, comrade. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, particularly for the figures on the lack of uh, registration among youth and, and the completely distorted electoral system, uh, which opened up uh, in 30 oh. years ago with all kinds of promises of, of change, effective change, uh, the apologists at that time for the compromise talked about structural reforms, reforms which would absolutely change the entire economic inequalities in South Africa and open up economic freedom for the people. Uh, and we've, we, you know, we haven't all these figures, uh, you know, point uh, to exactly the uh, challenge now faced politically. Uh, comrades, I see a number of comrades have just joined and, uh, well, have joined in the last uh, period. We welcome you to the uh, discussion. Uh, could you please indicate uh, those who would like to uh, come in and speak? We have an open uh, forum. Uh, so please indicate, put your hand up. I think we've got uh, Fortune there indicating. Any yeah, other comrades wanting to come yeah. in? Uh, Pam? Pam, just mute for the moment, please. Oh, and, sorry. Um, <laughs> And uh, sorry, and um, yeah, any any other comrades, please indicate. All right, uh, comrade Fortune, uh, please go ahead. Mm. Okay. If I could ask you to please to speak uh, to, sure let's say, because we'll have a number of uh, speakers to about five to seven minutes. Thank you. Mm. Fortune, please come in. Uh, you are muted at the moment. Just click on your unmute, and I think we'll be hearing you. Uh, comrade, we're struggling a bit with that. We want to hear you, but um, uh, sorry, I think maybe Comrade uh, Fortune has had problem connecting. Um, Ian, if you could uh, come in now and please, other comrades, uh, indicate. Hello, comrades. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Ian. Yeah, mine's just a very short question. Um, anyway, I'm sorry I missed it at the, at the start, if it's already been mentioned, but I'm just wondering how the uh, genocide case at the um, Hague is tying into the elections. Um what the balance is perhaps between the motivation from the best of the uh, freedom struggle uh, tradition um, against apartheid, uh, which Israel's obviously um, uh, very often been compared to and um, Mandela and on Down's own good position on the, the Palestine issue historically and electoralism, this is happening in, in an election year, of course, it's also an unprecedented development in Palestine, the level of genocidal violence in, in Gaza. So I'm not saying that it wouldn't have, South Africa wouldn't have responded in this way necessarily any other year. But um, is that one of the motivations? And um, will it help whether that's the motivation or not in shoring up support uh, for the ANC, given all the other huge problems uh, domestic on the domestic front that we've been talking about? Okay, thanks, uh, comrade. I, I think uh, comrade Fortune um, did come on again, but we've lost him. As soon as we can, we'd like to give you opportunity. Um, Carol, if you could come in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, thank you very much, uh, David. Um, I'm very interested to know how people know that the support for the ANC has dropped to below 50%. Um, I'd like, is that done by polling or how is that known? I'm also absolutely shocked at the state of things in South Africa. The the, the unemployment uh, is, you know, 46 uh, percent. The the housing, I mean, millions more houses needed. Um, how how do you how do people hear the people who've spoken, particularly who spoke very, very well indeed? Re I really enjoyed their presentations. Um, how do those people see this being rectified? What's the way forward 
to actually address these inequalities. It, it's 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 just shocking uh, what's going what's going on in South Africa for the many. Right. Thanks, uh, Carol. Uh, Comrade Fortune, whenever you can. But I recognize Comrade Nkanka. Mm. Can you come in? Mm. Just unmute. There we are. Mm. Okay. Revolutionary things, Comrades. Uh, thank you very much for an opportunity. Thank you very much for an opportunity. Uh, but, you no, know, Comrades, my analysis on, on, on this discussion is that we ourselves, as we identify ourselves as a working class within this struggle, we have no clear direction. There is no clear direction, and it seems like we are fear to take a stand. The current administration is supporting all the laws that are not worker friendly. Mm -hmm. If you look what is going to happen to Richard Bay in the few months, you will be able to see and acknowledge that the current administration have no interest in the working class. But the working class itself, it seems to be biased to the, situ to, 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 to the situation because we as a leaders or heads or representatives of the working class, we are not giving the workers, the, 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 the work, working, we are not giving the working class a clear direction of what must happen. Even us, when we speak, we seem to be neutral. We speak as if we are neutral. What we are doing, we only analyze it, but without providing any direction. Why do we have realized that the current administration have no interest, they have no interest at all to the working class. All the laws they are passing and supporting are anti-working class. I think we are the only ones who will be the solution by taking a decisive decision that on what the workers must do on the 29th of May. As Ulenin once said that the workers, the working class, after every certain years, they are given an opportunity for them to elect the class that is going to oppress them. Maybe for us, if we say that, you know, the working class must resist to vote, that must be the stand of the working class. But when we are only saying that, no, the system is against the working class, even in the current conditions under the current administration, they are against us, but without providing any solution or direction, it's not going to assist the working class. Thank you, Comrade, I submit. Sorry, mm -hmm. I was muted. Uh, thank you very much, Comrade um, Kanya. Uh, I saw that Comrade uh, Fortune was back again. Unfortunately, we seem to have lost him. Any other comrades wanting to indicate? Um, Yen, I see you, but uh, I'd like to get some wider discussion, particularly comrades uh, from uh, South Africa indicate. Uh, <laughs> And uh, please, if you're not uh, contributing, please mute. Um, uh, right. Well, comrades, uh, please come in. I, you know, uh, but um, I wondered if um, uh, you know we 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 unfortunately we keep uh, getting comrade fortune and and then losing him again, um, comrades. Um, I'm in a, a bit of a, uh, a dilemma. David. I would like to widen the discussion. Yeah. Mm. Uh, am I audible, Comrade David? Uh, I, uh, and Jabula, well? Yes, yes, please, Jabula. Okay, please speak, um, Jabula. Yeah. Sorry, yes. I can't no, no, see no. you at the moment. Okay. Carry on. Yes. Yes, no, no, I just want to touch uh, what uh, uh, Carol uh, uh, asked, and it seemed like nobody is, 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 is um, answering her. What she asked was, uh, how sure are we that the ANC uh, have lost uh, uh, 50 percent? Um, to, to start, uh, 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 I'll start by saying that we, we are ANC. 
Um, we have grown uh, uh, under ANC. We know ANC. Um, ANC have been given a chance for too long. The ANC firstly was given a chance um, in the 60s, um, where the, the youth of the time um, challenged the ANC to a point where ANC had to call a, a consultative a conference in Morocco, where comrades were expelled when they voiced uh, their concern regarding the corruption within the ANC, the corruption within the elite of the ANC, the nepotism, where we all know that most of uh, the elite leaders in the ANC, their kids, uh, the likes of Tabon Begi, uh, the likes of his father, um, they benefited from the fact that their parents were the elite within the movement. So we have always known that we have always known that the, the ANC uh, has always been an, a, a, a kept touch a, a movement, but then it advocated for what we all wanted that South Africa must be free. We were aware that the, the PAC is being cyclined you know, of which it, it, it stood for what our fathers, our forefathers fought for or advocated for, for our uh, you You're muted, comrade. Uh, I'm sorry, comrade. I was trying to, uh, oh. I was trying to control the background news noise and unfortunately slipped there. Uh, please, comrade uh, Ntembu, please continue. Unmute yourself and continue. So, uh, comrades, there's quite a lot of background noise, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, and comrade Ntembu, please. Sorry. Um, Ntembu, uh, yes, yes, comrade. Uh, yeah. Revolutionary please. Please. Go ahead, uh, comrade Ntembu. Yes, no, uh, I, I'm just greeting all the comrades, uh, and we are very thankful for the discussions uh, that we are having today. Uh, but seemingly, uh, we've been given the tools uh, of analysis, and we, we've done our analysis, but we are not acting upon them. Uh, I conquer with Ukomrit uh, Umkanka, as he was saying, that uh, the system, uh, the today's system, is not biased to the working class. And it passes uh, AMA regulations that uh, are anti-working class. But yet we are not doing anything about it. So I think now it's about time that we should act towards the system. Uh, not every time that we just uh, point out the negative things about the system. Uh, as Ulenin uh, uh, talks about the Labour Party, uh, we haven't heard of anyone representing the working class um maybe uh, trying uh, to open the labor party or maybe just doing action towards it. But we know that our solution uh, is just that will that will deal with it. Uh, as much as it's late now that we can talk about the, uh, the Labour Party right now, but then we should look at this formation of the e e e e e Labour Party, I submit. Okay, thanks for that uh, position. Um, if uh, So, Comrade and, and Tembu, thank you for uh, contributing. I hope I've not cut anyone else out. I see that uh, Comrade Mkanya and Kanka, so as uh, one to make a further point, if you could just make it brief, and then please, comrades, indicate if you want to come in. Sometimes uh, you raise your hand, and maybe I'm not seeing you properly, but uh, please try and do that le electronically so I'm not missing anything. Um, oh. Comrade and Kanka, please uh, come in again. Mm. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, comrade. No, comrades, uh, 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 I, I, I'm not trying to to to, to open a, a dialogue, but I I, I will really like to 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 correct what comrade Unjabura have said when he said that 
the Pan-Africanist Congress was representing the interest of our fathers. Uh, to us as a working class, we are an international organization. We don't recognize any race except human race. We think that all of us, we are humans. That's why sometimes we tend to differ with the Penny Africanist Congress because all those comrades who identify themselves as Penny Africa, Pan Africanist, when they speak, they speak on behalf of Africans. Why do we all know that before 1843, before the introduction of the Communist Manifesto, workers were, divi were, were divided? because they never had any scientific theory to unite the workers. When Karl Marx say workers of the world unite, it was whereby, it was whereby he realized that, you know, the only way to defeat a capitalist class is to unite the workers, regardless of being from Africa or Europe or anywhere else. But recognize anyone who is in the class of the working class as a working class. The, mm, uh, the Comrade Mukaka, class I'm sorry if you could pull it a bit together because you have had a chance before because I see Comrade Fortune uh, is with us and we want to give him an opportunity. He struggled a bit with the connection, I think. Uh, but okay, please, if, where, where there's a gap, uh, a very good points that you're making. Comrade uh, Fortune, please come in. Mm. Just unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh, we lost you. Mm. Mm. Such a pity. I, I, it, I, we really do want to hear uh, what he has to say. Um, other comrades indicating? Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'd like to see some more contributions, if we could, uh, from comrades who haven't yet uh, spoken, maybe with a question or contribution. Ah, Comrade Fortune, please come in, unmute yourself and please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, comrades. How are you? Uh, uh, comrade. I will be brief. Most of the comrades here have been able to state um, very good positions. As an introduction, I'll say I'm Comrade Fortune from the Revolutionary Workers Group, which is the Zimbabwean section of the International Leninist Socialist Organization, a Marxist Leninist organization. Uh, we, we did publish our position on the South African elections recently, and I have posted that on, our ch on, on the charts for Comrade Zul. Uh, carry on, Comrade, if you can. Comrade Fortune. I'm sorry, Comrade. We'll, we'll have to open up the uh, floor when and again to you when when we can hear you. Uh, I'm so sorry you're having this uh, problem of uh, connection. Uh, other other comrades to come in. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, look, uh, comrades. Uh, I'm going to ask um, uh, comrade. Uh, survive to come in, if uh, uh, in uh, in particular in response to a question, why say you'll have substantially the right to reply uh, at the end. I'm just trying to get a bit more exchange between comrades. We've had some very interesting contributions. We'd like to have uh, more directly from uh, South African uh, workers who I see are here, including some personal friends. Uh, to come in and ask a question or to make a contribution. Uh, but Comrade Sabayu, are you still with us? Oh, there we are. Yeah. Could you respond to this question yes. about uh, yes. whether whether we can take, uh, uh, I think two questions have been posed. Question, first of all, 
are we absolutely sure the ANC will not uh, uh, suddenly turn uh, its rebirth uh, back to getting a, at least 50%, which is something that has been raised? Secondly, uh, do we um, not advocate um, a complete classless society uh, without reference to uh, national origins and, and the like? Uh, comrade, uh, just five minutes, please. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ANC has been condemned by the much of history, and it doesn't matter what it does. Each, I mean, whichever, you know, um, I mean, whatever it tried to do, um, it only bring its own demise by other means. Think about what they've done just in the past few years. They, the Ramaphosa regime did, and I think has tried, I think, in my view, to cleanse the ANC of some of these openly corrupt and discredited um, elements. But these are people that were funding the ANC. Um, the very scandals of multi-billion you know, tenders um, from which money was squeezed from the state and plundered and all the things and so on, are exactly the same money as Zuma, I think, won them before that funded the ANC and, and I think kept it alive. And the result of which is that you now have the ANC having allowed some of these people to be prosecuted, some of these people to go out of the party, uh, and so on and so on, you have the ANC that can't even pay its own staff uh, in the head office. You have the ANC that doesn't even have posters. I mean, where I, I stay, you can barely come across the ANC poster. Never mind the fact that they can't fund um, electoral campaigns and many other campaigns on the scale that you have seen before. And that's because... The ANC dependent on those very corrupt networks, even just to run the kind of campaigns that they ran before. So whilst they might have, you know, you know, well, um, regained some few hundred thousand votes, uh, as it was said before, level of some middle class people that left the ANC under Zuma. Uh, at the same time, they have lost their capacity to campaign. At the same time, they have not been able to address. Um, the erosion of their support within the working class, which much more than the issue of corruption, um, which in a way is an issue, I mean, a major issue, especially when it comes to service delivery and other things, um, but much more is, of course, the inherent and the most devastating consequences of capitalism, of their neoliberal policies, and of course, particularly in this period of crisis, where millions have lost their jobs, where millions have lost their means of livelihood, the levels of inequality and poverty are deepening and widening. And of course, um, all these services that, um, you know, they could um, in the past point as achievement of the post-1994 period, all of them are in decline um, from energy access, education, and you can go on and on about that. I think just to say, uh, the, the I mean, the DA as well has been losing a lot of votes. Uh, I mean, I've just looked here that between 2050, so the ANC, let me just uh, conclude this point. Even in the last, because the question was, where do we get this? Is a pulse. The polls are indicating that. But even in the last local government elections, the ANC got 46% of the vote. So it had already fallen below 50% in the last local government election. Now, local government elections are slightly different because there the working class has many choices including, you know, community leaders that uh, are in their struggles who stand as candidates for the wards and other things. But, um, so there will always be differences, but the differences are not major. And, and, and of course, when you look at the fact that the crisis has accelerated, ever since that last election, you can be sure that even those that would have voted ANC if the last local government elections are national elections, many of them would have been disillusioned because um, of this crisis um, of unemployment and poverty and all of the things. Now, just in terms of the Labour Party that, um, oh, the DA also lost 500,000 votes between 2015 and 2019. That is going to continue, as I've said. Um, and I agree with the comrade. Um, the PS is not is not an alternative. Uh, just to say, uh, as you know, in a personal note, I. You know, I, you know, I, I'm one of those young people, of course, who joined the PSC because I thought it represented the aspirations, you know, of the 
um, of the black working class as a young person who was recruited into socialist politics. But that was a mistake of 11 year old me in 1993. I went on to stay even when it had become clear to me that um, it is not the party I thought it was. So I served at the level of National Executive Committee. And I can tell you that it is much more rotten to the core. If coming, if it came to power, it would have been worse than the ANC in many respects. That I can assure you about. The Labour Party that Kumlid Waze spoke about, look, oh, the Gaza issue, I, I do think that case is going to have some impact, but nothing that would change um, the fundamental trajectory of the political situation and the way it's developing. I do think that certainly ANC is going to pick up some few hundreds thousand votes in Muslim communities in Western Cape and here, but I think it's going to lose much more um, in their traditional constituencies. So I don't think that is going to change the fortunes of the ANC overall. It may just contain the pace of the, uh, of, 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 of the decline in the circumstances. Now, the, the issue I wanted to address of the Labour Party, as I conclude, is that, look, um, I, I think we, we must say the idea that uh, Matunjo has invited uh, the Labour movement, um, and maybe just to say to comrades, I, I'm one of those trade union leaders that um, I, I campaign on a daily basis um, for the Workers' Party. I mean, every single interview that I've done, and I mean, on average, I do about two or three TV interviews on a weekly basis. I do point out that the ANC has to go. None of the opposition parties are an alternative. We need the party. As I said in the last big debate, that you know it must be a party based on working class demands, working class struggle, socialism, and revolution. Right? Any other thing else will not actually change um, the, the, the law that is faced by the working class and um, whoever comes to power in these elections. The, the, the issue of the, the Labour Party, uh, I can say this much. Matundra has done everything he can to make sure that um, the sub to doesn't join this party. I mean, I, for one, I spoke to the General Secretary of, of, of the Labour Party, uh, of, 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 of AMCU, and he said they've invited. I said, but where is that invitation? He could have taken an opportunity to forward the invitation. I was with Zueli, who is with Matunjo in the same group. Zueli is Vavi, the general secretary of Sabtu. And he was asking every staff member whether they've seen that invitation. And, and, and the, the, the reality is, um, I, I, I've dealt with leadership of AMCO before. I do, and I'm almost certain that the reason even they delayed the launch of this party is because they knew once they wanted to establish uh, the party, uh, because Sabtu has the same resolution to the extent that we are unable to act on it. Uh, of course, leadership of Sabtu has its own weaknesses, but it's also because of internal weaknesses and the contradictions, uh, the crisis, the fractional, and, and, and particularly the role of of, 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 of NUMSA leadership and so on. But at least sections of sub two would have been willing, would have been open um, to come to that party and so on. And I do think that um, it is not coincident that uh, we can't see that in those invitations. It's not coincident that even after I extended myself to the general secretary of AMCO and reminded him, by the way, that he passed us I, I was a coordinator of the National Mine Workers Committee that um, you know, coordinated 2012 strikes and so on. Um, as a member of the DSM, you know, uh, I was a trade union organizer of the party at the time and, and you know, played that role in that capacity among the mine workers and so on. They passed us precisely because we said the only way forward um, for the mine workers was to create a mass workers party on the basis of a socialist program, right? Now, when he said to me, we can't join SAF2 because, you know, we're not sure they will support uh, our labor. But I said, but SAF2 has a resolution on that. I said to him, in actual fact, what did you remember you pitching us all? It wasn't a question of the Workers' Party. So whilst publicly, like um, NUMSA, they would say the party is open. I think even much more than NUMSA, because at least, 
you know, um, Matu, you know, the, the leadership of NUMSA um, had a base on the base of which it could still maneuver in the part that they created. Uh, I think what worsened uh, their uh, comrade, Stalinism. I just dropped into a conclusion of yeah. your Sorry to, for time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yes. yeah was more of the yes what was the sectarianism towards all other uh, within the workers movement was more of the rasputin element um in the form of banda that comrade wazy talked about the leadership that had hijacked the leadership of sub uh, of numsa not known by anybody including in numsa itself but were able to play the role that they were and i think they were scared of any open political process because they knew they were going to be marginalized now Okay, but comrade. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry soft, I can uh, hear. You know, okay. uh, you know, I'm trying to. Okay, they, I'm, they, sorry I'm just to saying that the the, yeah. the 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 leadership doesn't have a base around them. I think that's the reason they are much more yeah. scared of opening up that process. Thank you. Okay, no, no, well, well taken. Uh, just before uh, you come in, Jimmy, uh, I see comrade Fortune. Do you want to finish your point, if you can? Uh, and and please recognize the shortage of time because we now have other people to speak. I know that you've had problems getting in. Hello. Uh, come in and, and please, yeah, right to the point, please, comrade. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, L let me just let, let me just be right to the point. I think yeah. the, the most important thing is that uh, we should be working around the United Front to build a workers' party. That should be the main, the main thing. And at all costs, as comrades, we should avoid such sectarian attitude towards building such a party. Well, the, uh, that is to be... And I'm sure also it is important that our focus should be on the rank and file, the masks within the unions, the bodies of the working class, and not to focus on the bureaucrats. Uh, because as far as we are concerned from the RWG, the contest uh, uh, on the 29th is fundamentally a contest between two camps of imperialism fronted by the mainstream parties. So the working class has no say. It has no. It, it, it is of no consequence to the working class. So that should be our way forward, and that should be our position. Thank you, comrades. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, comrade Fortune, and thank you for keeping to uh, to time. Just one uh, point which maybe comrades could respond to just before Jimmy comes in. Uh, it's very confusing to socialists internationally uh, when uh, people, uh, parties advocate nationalization of every single sector internationally, and yet there's no connection to the working class and to providing uh, the working class with a vision about, uh, for instance, uh, essential services and the like and dealing with the absolute, uh, let me not use the word absolute, even though it's true, uh, problems uh, with the state-owned enterprises uh, and, the, uh, and the graphic mismanagement. Uh, you know, we need to also look to see just how we phrase the, uh, these questions and to um, remove any confusion that may arise from such apparent uh, radical uh, solutions. Jimmy, please come in. Mm. Uh, thanks, David. Uh, David, I'm going to be very, very brief because I want to make a suggestion. First of all, I have a question, and the question is, uh, there was a white section of the population, the old Boer uh, communities, who did have, until the last couple of years, a separate identity, an ethnic identity. And I really wanted to ask a question, whether or not the Boers as a as a class, as a race, as an ethnic grouping, whatever, whether they exist and whether they have divided between that, whether there's a class division, whether there's any working class or political class within the remnant of that society. The second thing I wanted to say is that comrades McKenna and comrades Jabola were both cut off during the interruptions, and I would ask as a matter of respect if we give them a minute or two. Uh, for the uh, thanks, uh, Jimmy. Uh, let's do that now because I think we uh, we we may have uh, opportunity. Do any of the comrades wanted to come in, uh, please, uh, very briefly and uh, and to the point, if I could say. I, I saw one comrade indicating. I I 
yes. Uh, I'm trying to see the name. Uh, comrade Den uh, Denise, uh, please uh, come in. Comrade yeah. Edward. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going by what I can see. Please come in, comrade. Mm. And that you're muted, Bill. Yeah, and unmute, yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, thanks very much, uh, Ms. Farrell. Um, I'm just wondering about what arguments are being used now by the Communist Party in relation to the stages, you know, 30 years after the um, election in 1994. I mean, what, what, are, what are they arguing in terms of when, when we'll reach the next stage and when there'll be a discussion about socialism and why they should uh, not abandon the ANC and fight for fight for workers' power. You know, the the situation is so bad in terms of all the kind of basic indicators, housing and so on. You know, they, I remember in 1994 discussing with somebody and up in, in, in the, in, in, you know, north of Pretoria. She was a very committed to the ANC person, but she said, they're going to build a million houses before the end of this year. You know, this, that was in April of 1994, you know, and, and uh, people had such high hopes and beliefs but they've been just completely abandoned in relation to everything, education, in relation to health, uh, and uh, so on. So what, what arguments are the Communist Party making in relation to the likely perspectives? Shani? Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, Comrade Emmett Farrell. Uh, is that right? <laughs> that's correct. With another, with yeah. another pseudonym. <laughs> yeah. uh, Comrade Makanya, um and Kanka, if you could come in very briefly, because I think we now have to give uh, the right of reply uh, to Comrade Wisey. Mm -hmm. No, Comrade. Comrade. Uh, to be honestly, to the Communist Party of South, of South Africa today, it is a crime to be a true communist. To the Communist Party of South Africa. All the communists, the people who are real communists, have decided to resign and leave the South African Communist Party. Because the South African Communist Party have came the defense line of the African National Congress. The South African Communist Party is no longer the vanguard of the working class, but it is the vanguard of the ANC. If you do anything against the ANC, not the South African Communist Party, you will be charged by the South African Communist Party. I was a district secretary of the South African Communist Party when they said to me, I must charge the people who have joined Umkonto Wesizwe Party, Umkonto Wesizwe Party, which have been recently launched by the former president Jacob Zuma. I say to them, I will rather resign because when I joined the SACP, I thought the SACP was an independent component within the Alliance. But today, when you have grudge or any vendettas or any challenges with the ANC, the ANC leadership will instruct the leadership of the South African Communist Party to deal with you. The, South Afri the Communist Party of South Africa is no longer a vanguard of the working class. It is the vanguard of the ANC. Thank you. Okay, thank you, comrade. I I I may have cut off some one comrade uh, by accident. By the way, uh, you know when you have noise sometimes coming through, uh, you try and stop that noise cutting across a comrade, and sometimes the uh, you, you you end up clicking something. And and I apologize if there's been such a problem. Um, any any comrade felt they were had been cut off. I think Comrade Makanya and Kanka, you know, you you had uh, had have been able to come back. I think now, if uh, no one else, uh, a last chance for any questions, which our Comrade uh, Wiseman can can respond to. If there are no other questions, I think we could uh, move over to uh, Comrade Wiseman coming in, and then. We will move to draw this con uh, discussion to a conclusion. Thanks, comrades. Mm -hmm. Comrade Wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, come. Look, I think 
uh, there's been such a wide range, you know, of uh, uh, comments and questions. It's virtually impossible to, to do justice to uh, to all of them. And so, with the, with the, with, I hope the comrades will indulge me if I decide subjectively which I think are the 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 key issues for this discussion. But uh, on, on the question about how we know, just to reinforce uh, what Sibayas pointed out, the downward electoral trajectory of the ANC is not a new phenomenon. Uh, it expressed itself firstly in the wake of the Marikana massacre in 2014, where its vote went down to 62%. Uh, in 2019, it went down further to 57%. I'm talking about the general election. Uh, but again, you know, all of that should be read against the fact that there has been a massive withdrawal from participation in the elections. And it registered uh, in 2019 for the first time as the majority of the electorate not participating. So there has been a collapse in the ANC's political authority. The question is why? Um, it's not enough to explain it in terms of the, uh, you know, the the absolute co uh, incompetence and corruption and so forth. It goes deeper than that. The ANC uh, was born as a party of the segment of the oppressed black majority. Uh, the upper layers, the middle class and upper middle class. It was founded by people with property, by the chiefs and so forth. And their quarrel with colonialism at the time is that they had the aspiration to become part of, of, the, of, the, of the new capitalist class that had come in through colonialism into the country. And the entire struggle of the ANC has been directed <laughs> towards that. There was a radical change that took place with the emergence of the Mandela ge generation uh, who, who established the ANC Youth League and converted the ANC into an organization of pleaders with imperialism to make some accommodation for them within the new political and uh, social economic order to engaging in mass action. That it began uh, uh, as a result of that generation, Mandela's generation, but it never changed the ideological aspirations of the class in whose interest the ANC was established. Even when the Freedom Charter was adopted in 1955, Mandela was then requested to respond to, well, let's call them allegations, that the ANC had now adopted a socialist program, given that within the Freedom Charter, there were calls for the nationalization of the commanding heights of the economy. There is a video that is going around where Mandela re repeated what he had said in response in 1956 to that question, which uh, captures it very, very clearly. Uh, in, in, in summary, what Mandela said uh, is that under socialism, the workers own the means of production, distribution, and exchange. Production takes place for the satisfaction of social need and not for private profit. We do not envisage political and economic changes of such a far-reaching nature. Our purpose in nationalization, and I'm paraphrasing him here, is to create the conditions for the development of a prosperous non-European bourgeoisie. In other words, the ANC has always been com committed to the preservation of capitalism. And their aspiration was to be absorbed into it. In that sense, the ANC was no different 
from any of the colonial bourgeois post-independence uh, uh, after the Second World War in particular, who wanted to take over from imperialism, from colonialism, the management of the plunder of the country's resources for the enrichment of that tiny elite whose interests are they represented. That explains the reason that this has happened, because that aspiration in, in the world in which they came to power could not be fulfilled because the capitalist system has become an integrated entity dominated by imperialism and dedicated to retarding the development of the so-called emerging, which should be submerging markets, and are determined to keep them underdeveloped and need local management. And that is what the ANC's role is. And unfortunately, that applies to the ANC, as he has pointed out as well, to enable the capitalist system to continue, but on the basis of a more legitimate government. And if you look at the constitution on the basis of which um, the ANC came to power, it was only completed finally in 1996, incidentally, but that um, is, a, is, a, is, is a different story. Embedded in the constitution that we are daily called upon to revere as the most progressive constitution in the world is embedded the economic dictatorship of the capitalist class. So that whereas, for example, 50% plus one enables the masses to elect a government of their choice. But when it comes to the nationalization of the commanding heights of the economy, and incidentally, just to answer Dave uh, on that question, the distinction that we have to make is that the nationalization that the working class talks about is nationalization under the control and management of the working class. Otherwise, you are talking about the Nats did, uh, what the British did uh, after 2008 or immediately after the Second World War. That's not what we are talking We're talking about workers' control to implement a democratically worked out plan of production to satisfy the needs uh, of society. But the ANC, uh, as I indicated in my introduction, is a party representing that class. So what they agreed to in the negotiations, so far as the constitution is concerned, is that the property clause, in other words, that clause that would empower a government, for example, to nationalize, could not be uh, um, uh, chained without a two-thirds majority. So irrespective of the fact that the masses have elected an ANC government with 50% plus one, when it comes to property, it is defended by a two-thirds majority, um, by the requirement that it, it requires a two-thirds majority, giving the one-third in parliament an effective veto, veto and in fact, it's not only protected by that clause, incidentally. The DA has made it clear that even this diluted bill that the, the EFF has campaigned for that has now been adopted with expropriation without compensation, they are taking it to the Constitutional Court, relying on the Bill of Rights. Um, there are provisions in the Constitution to protect um, any tampering with treasury requiring a 75% threshold. So behind all the fine words of the constitution, you have, just like in any other country, the comrade quoted Lenin saying that uh, bourgeois democracy is a democracy where the working class is given the opportunity once every few years to decide which gang is going to oppress and exploit them. And the constitution of South Africa uh, embodies what, what Lenin was speaking about. That is the reason, by the way, that the Constitutional Court, in one of its first judgment, testing what its true class character was, ruled, uh, made a ruling in the case of somebody who went to the Constitutional Court because the public health system in KZN, KwaZulu Natal, had denied him the right to dialysis. He was dying. The Constitutional Court upheld the decision of the KwaZulu-Natal Department of Health on the basis 
that the socioeconomic rights in the constitution are subject to available resources. In other words, there's a price on it. He died. They sentenced him to death. A similar case was brought on housing. A similar case was brought on prepaid meters. But most striking of all is the decision that the Constitutional Court took on a legally binding collective agreement that was signed between the public sector unions and the government in 2018. COVID came and the government claimed it had no money to implement the third leg, the workers got zero. The matter ended up in the Constitutional Court in the most strikingly anti-working class judgment since 1994, the Constitutional Court condemned the unions for one demanding that the government must adhere to a legally binding collective agreement. Again, the issue that was cited was the question of, uh, of a lack of finances. Now, this is a government, by the way, that when it came to power, corporate tax was at 52% per annum of annual revenue. They've reduced it today to 26%. They reduced it from 27 to 26% in the middle of the pandemic, cutting the health budget, by the way. Because in order to plug that gap that they've created, a government that now has a responsibility from 1994 to service five times the population, the apartheid regime uh, was responsible for, decides to cut off its own tax revenue from big, big business. So they plug the gap by borrowing on the financial markets. So they have to prioritize the servicing of the debt. How much is the debt servicing cost today? It takes up 20% of the budget. So the logic of the government's adherence to neoliberal capitalist policies requires it. It doesn't matter whether people are good or bad. It's not a subjective question. It's dictated by the laws of the capitalist system that the ANC must behave in the way that it does. The situation is aggravated, of course, by corruption, which is the oil that makes the capitalist system in general function anyway, corruption. But it's worse in this case because what the reason for the frustration of what is called the radical economic transformation, represented by the likes of Malima, uh, now outside the ANC, but those remnants of it inside the ANC and so on and so forth. What they are frustrated with is that they believe that once the ANC gets into government, there would be a black capitalist class that would develop, that mm. who's, which would be in size, as, uh, would correspond to the demographics of the country. They hoped, in other words, to be the dominant black capitalist class. What is the situation today? The only wholly black owned company in the top 100 of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is Ramaphosa's brother-in-law's company, African Rainbow, Rainbow Minerals. They are seething with frustration. And that is why they've invented this unscientific term, white monopoly capital. Capital is capital. Even Cronin said that, by the way. Uh, irrespective of its uh, of its color, that is the root of the crisis that uh, uh, the ANC has consigned the ANC to the position uh, uh, which it is in. So, to answer the question, and I'm sorry if I leave out uh, other issues that comrades might have wanted to uh, um, uh, uh, raise with me. What is the way forward for the working class? Well. We were approached for discussions when it was still uh, WASP by the EFF. And we put on the table the following five point program to form an electoral alliance with them. We knew at the time that even though the leadership was corrupt, there would be illusions uh, amongst many youth in particular at the radical posturing and the phraseology that we've got political freedom, but no economic freedom. So we said, okay, let's agree on this platform. Nationalization of the commanding rights of the economy under workers' control and management. Free education, free healthcare, the election of all officials subject to the right of recall, and a workers' representative on a workers' wage. They were not interested. They, they made counter demands and said, 
uh, we want all your members to become our members. Um, and uh, a member of your central committee must sit on our central command and put forward only EFF positions. We said, let's take it to the members for debate. They were not interested. So those, those discussions went absolutely nowhere. What is the situation today? Um, I don't want to, to, to go into the details. Uh, I mean, to, to, to give a direct answer, you know, to the points that comrades raised, right? I, I think, unfortunately, they are subjective. You see, if we had taken the attitude in relation to the founding of SAFTU in 2017, that we cannot, we cannot take Vavi seriously, it would have been rank sectarianism. There are many crimes that Vavi has to answer for, by the way. In the uprising that took place on the mines, Vavi condemned those workers, saying that uh, they are being organized by us, by the way, by our former comrade Leif Shange, and that they are going to pay for it. But an even worse crime, after the massacre, Vavi, as general secretary, led a delegation of the tripartite alliance. They tried to bus workers to go and what they, they said they were going to take Rustenburg out of the hands of counter-revolutionaries. Comrade Sibay uh, and I, sorry, Com, let me just finish this point. It's very, very minute. important. Just yeah. One minute, yeah. Sibay mm. and I went to ENCA to call upon the, uh, they agreed to their credit to interrupt the, uh, uh, the, 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 the program for today, to allow us to make an appeal to call off what would have led to worker on worker bloodshed. Nonetheless, when it was, uh, when Vavi was expelled and Numsa was expelled and they formed a new federation, we went in and argued that Saftu must dedicate itself to form a workers' party. Out of that came the 2018 working class summit. Uh, and that led to the adoption of the declaration. I don't think it is correct to point to defects in the positions of either the AMCO leadership or the SAFTU leadership. Our priority is to argue for all these forces to come together, to form a workers' party. Let them be exposed in the eyes of the masses. Test it out. They have said everybody must regard this as their party. It's not an AMCO party. Well, let's test it out. Let's have the discussion. And if they fail to respond, let's expose them in front of their members who clearly are serious about this matter if you read the resolution that was adopted at their special congress and that okay. i believe okay. is okay. what we are yeah, sorry to... we must conclude because we're going to actually run out of uh yeah, yeah. of the yeah. available time i'm sorry um uh, so uh, just uh, once just one point dave yeah, so what yeah. i'm saying is our reading is that we have a division in the struggles of working class communities all of them fighting for the same thing i read the stats earlier Surely it's not a rocket science, as we and, and this is what we've done, to work out a common platform of struggle for working class communities to come together as a national civic on a socialist program. The same thing applies to the youth. The same thing applies to the working class call for a trade union socialist confederation under the umbrella of a workers' party. If, if you like, uh, let everybody be part of it without feeling threatened that they have to surrender their independent identity. In other words, a united front type of approach. That is what the Marxist Workers' Party is campaigning for. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, comrade. Uh, could I, before I ask uh, Roger to come in about uh, uh, some announcements, can I thank uh, both uh, Comrade uh, Wiseman, and I see that uh, Comrade Sabay is, is, is uh, indicated he has to leave. I want to thank you enormously for uh, joining in. I know that your comrades are under enormous pressure. There's a lot of work uh, being undertaken, uh, and we really appreciated the first-hand exchanges. Sometimes not every comrade would have followed all the details, but uh, you know the general trend and the fundamental uh, the fundamentals about class analysis and the refraction of our class polarization through the various complicated party formations 
uh, you know, is the way in which uh, the ANC and 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 uh, let's say the capitalists intend to rule by confusing the working class with all kinds of flattering uh, ideas uh, ag against the uh, resolute determination of the class to organize and speak for itself. Uh, we thank the comrades for uh, coming in. Uh, we hoped you would have had more comrades uh, speaking. Uh, we appreciate uh, that, but we just know that all our discussions are open to uh, full participation with, unfortunately, the limits of time. Uh, so thank you, comrades. Roger, please come in. Mm. Uh, yes. Um, I also just would like to add my, my congratulations to the comrades. I think it was one of the best meetings uh, that we have held. Uh, we, I would point out that we had, um, in total, uh, I make it 32 comrades who participated, uh, and at least uh, half of them, I think, were South African comrades. Um, but we also had comrades from nine countries based on four continents who were um, attending the meeting. So I think that's uh, uh, something to, uh, to, to, to celebrate. Um, what the meeting showed also is how, despite the treachery and the betrayals of the ANC, that the spirit of the South African Revolution is by no means extinguished. And it gives us, I think, hope for um, for the future. Uh, now, I, I, in talking about uh, next week's meeting, I'd just like to say that um, we focus a lot on uh, on the revolutionary potential. Uh, sometimes we need to look also at the tactics and strategies of the enemies of the working class and the techniques of the counter-revolution and to understand um, uh, how what a danger they pose. And the main te uh, technique that they use is, of course, to divide the working class along ethnic, along um, communal, along um, sectarian or religious or national uh, lines. Now, how do they do that? One example, a classic example, was uh, in Bosnia in the 90s. Uh, we, we, um, uh, when, the, uh, when Yugoslavia was breaking up, and we had the um, the uh, wars developing in uh, in Croatia, in Serbia, and uh, uh, Slovenia. The the uh, the fragmentation of the old um, United um, Nation of Yugoslavia in Bosnia. They held joint demonstrations of the Serbs, Croats, and Muslims marching together under the banner saying, "We will not be divided. We stay together. We believe in unity." And how long did that last? Within within weeks or, or months at the outside, it was absolutely ravaged by perhaps the most bloodthirsty and horrific uh, of the wars of that uh, of the Balkan um, region. Now, one comrade um, is coming uh, next week, um, an Italian comrade, Antonello, who um, who spent several years in Bosnia, not at that time, but since. And he's uh, going to give us a little bit of a study on uh, not just what happened in Bosnia, but how the ruling class is able so easily to divide the working class. And I think it's going to be an important lesson for all of us to learn. So um, how rapidly they can engineer this ethnic uh, polarization and, uh, and divide and rule. So I hope to see all the comrades, particularly comrades who haven't attended before, please please do start um, coming to our meetings. We meet every week. Uh, if we don't have your name on our mailing list, please, could you uh, could you uh, give us your emails? And um, we hope to see you again. Thank you, comrade. Uh, thank you, all comrades attending. I see some comrades have just joined now. Uh, we welcome you. I can see uh, comrades from Namibia and, and elsewhere. Uh, we 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 sorry you won't be able to participate more fully. Uh, uh, to pick up the spirit, uh, comrades, the struggle continues. We have united in uh, the struggle to form a mass workers' party to be able to combat capitalism in South Africa with all the wreckage that we see of people's lives, and we continue as before. Amantla. <clears throat>
bought uh, workers South Africa. <clears throat> Thank you. 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 Thank you.